Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. So there is a lot to unpack and we're going to start with the FOMC meeting or conference that's supposed to happen at 2.30. I am expecting Powell to announce another 25 basis point hike. Now, even though probably above 80% of us believe that that's what's going to happen. Sorry, that's Stitch seeing something. Um, that's not what we want, really, right? I mean, the data that they're using is a look behind as opposed to what's necessarily current. Um, you have banks that are not doing so well right now. Uh, banks like PacWest down, what is it, 40 some odd percent year to date. Um, Key Corp down, uh, who is it? Key, I'm sorry, my bad. PacWest is down 71%. Key Corp is down 44%, both year to date. Um, those are regional banks that are definitely seeing a downturn. There are others. Now, a 25 basis point move could add to the pressure. I also think that the 25 basis point move is definitely going to push us into a deep recession as opposed to just a recession so those are those are one of those are some of the reasons why i'm hoping that it's i'm, I'm still holding out hope um even though i know damn well it's going to be a 25 bit move um arc invest kathy wood you go on girl coinbase is faced with a lot of you know regulatory woes, woes right now they're going up against the sec they've been accused of you know uh insiders using information to pull out um, of shares. They're being accused of storing biometric information uh, illegally. So they've got a lot of problems going on. And what does that do? It causes a downturn in the stock. So buy in. That's what she did. Smart. Now, they also announced that they're going to be offering non-US based institutional services um, or institution services offshore with perpetual futures, perpetual crypto futures. That's kind of a big deal, kind of a big deal, because I think it starts to signal that, hey, Coinbase is actually making moves and other companies are actually making moves to be able to survive outside of the United States. And that's something we should we should be considering. All right. One of the reasons why companies like to do business across the world as opposed to being focused in a single country is because it gives them the ability to absorb any negative impact within a given country. And this is what we're looking at. Now, the next story I'm bringing you is not directly tied to um, not directly tied to crypto, but definitely has an impact. And that's Europe's just steamrolling, like basically on a bullet train toward CBDCs or a CBDC, a digital euro. That is causing major concern around privacy because you can see what anybody is doing with their own money. Unlike cash, if I walk into your store with cash, nobody knows that I bought that bag of chips. Nobody knows that. I can get in trouble for buying those bag of chips, but I bought a bag of chips and nobody needs to know about it. A CBDC would not allow that to happen. Everybody would know that you bought that bag of chips. That's that's what's scary about that. Um, and that's what people's concerns are. But with MICA, their consideration with stable consideration of stable coins, um, I think that the CBDC in Europe is going to come and I think it's going to have more than just a few bumps in the road. Anyway, one of my favorite stories today is about how technology is coming together to create both good and bad things. Not directly tied to crypto, but definitely has an impact on Web3, which is why I'm talking about it. So Chegg is a company that offers basically educational services like help with homework, that kind of stuff. And as we all know, kids are turning toward chat GPT and other AI systems to help them perform their research and go get that information. So imagine if you would be able to go to chat GPT and say, hey, you know, this particular book happens to be, you know, in public domain because, you know, things like history don't change. Um, can you give me a synopsis about that? That's helping that, that student learn something, do studying. Now, Chegg, Chegg's, um, 
Chegg CEO got on there and he was like, oh, well, you know, you know, ChatGPT isn't correct, you know, all the time. Nobody's correct all the time, but it's a really good tool for certain things. And if you marry that tool with other tools, you can actually do very, very well using it. And it'll cost quite a bit less. Now, fast forward or not fast forward, but if at the same time, you have other services that lend themselves to creating content. So imagine being able to go perform research using ChatGPT, using something like Wonder Dynamics to take the face of one actor, put it on another actor, or take the emotions or body movements from one actor to put it on another actor, which is what they're doing. You know who's a part of that company? The kid that was in, what's his name? Ty Sheridan, the kid that was in Ready Player One. That's what makes this insane. Imagine taking all of these different tools, coming to Web3 and creating an environment where you'd be able to truly interact with characters made up specifically for Web3. Characters that have real lines and do real things according to their interaction with other players. I think the, the future of Web3 is going to be insane. That said, I also think that there are going to be security concerns with how well you can create a deep fake. So be careful out there, but do your research. I think there are a lot of things coming that are going to help people do things. Something else that I'm paying attention to. So there's a guy on uh, Crypto's R, Crypto R Us called George Tun. I like his show. Um, I don't believe in everything that he says, but I do like his show. I think he's very informative. Seems like a cool dude. Um, but he was involved in a show that's basically like Shark Tank. You're going to come in as you know a, a, a uh, crypto project, and they're going to judge your crypto project. Well, Coin Market Cap beat them to the beat them to the table. They've got deeper pockets, right? It's owned by uh, Binance. Um, beat them to the table with a show called Killer Whales. Shark Tank, Killer Whales. See where this is going. So I saw the, I saw a, a trailer for it. Um, it's by Hello Labs, and this record is multi-award uh, winning producer slash director, uh, Castlin. What is it? Peter Castlin. I have to look that up. Um, but this guy, it's going to annoy me if I don't know this guy's name. It's really going to freaking annoy me. Hold on a second. I'll get it to you. That's Rosenweig, Micah, Paul Castlin. Sorry, Paul Castlin. But... They're basically creating Shark Tank for crypto-based projects. And I guess you win something at the end. I don't know what it is that you win. That you win. I have to kind of figure that out. Go, go to the show, watch it, and see what, see what that's all about. Um, cute, right? I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but that seems to be the, the, the same topic. That's going on. A lot of these talking heads with different shows are saying, oh, we're going to have, you know, different projects come on. Like George was announcing that he's going to have a show tonight um, and it's going to have, you know, a bunch of meme coins on there. I frankly don't believe in meme coins. He, he His view is, and this is where we differentiate, his view is that meme coins help people get into, you know, crypto. My take is, is that, yes, it might help them get into crypto, but some of these meme coins wind up becoming rug pulls and not necessarily the traditional rug pull where they meant to steal money or anything like that, but just rug pulls because they're stupid, right? They don't have any use case. No, there's no reason to actually have them. Polygon has use cases. Ethereum, Cardano, to, you could even say the same about Solana. Just so many of these other coins have realistic use cases other than, oh, well, we just want to educate people about crypto. Open a book. Read the, read the what, eight, ten-page white paper on, on Bitcoin. There are different things that you'd be able to do to learn about crypto other than putting your money into a meme coin that will obviously lose your money or i mean in some cases they are making money look at pepe coin um it's going up like a few hundred percent it's now ha it now has a above 500 million dollar market cap but what do you do if it goes down to a hundred million dollar market cap right so i'm i'm paying attention to these things and i'm kind of like ah, oh, i'm not really feeling that right i i Tell me about some projects that are actually doing things. Look at Chainlink. Look at VChain. Look at look at these co these coins that are being made that are actually 
doing things with their network and not just a meme coin, just another coin, right? That's that's my kind of take on it. That's my kind of take on it. And then I'm looking at Ticketmaster and their new competition, Box Office. Box Office is by Sports Illustrated, who's been kind of deep into the NFT space. And they decided they're going to build their own ticketing platform end to end on Polygon. And I think it's a big deal because, as you know, Ticketmaster kind of has a stranglehold hold on, you know, ticketing in the United States and some would say around the world. I'm looking at it and I'm saying if, if Sports Illustrated's um, ticketing system brings any kind of competition, I think that's going to be a good thing. And I think that's something we should actually absolutely pay attention to. Anyway, you know what we should do? We should get to the numbers. So I'm starting in a different way today so we can actually see this particular one. You know how I like to see my big picture. And here's the big picture. Bitcoin up above 28,642, up, up, up above that 2828 number that I have. And you'll see it in the other chart that I'll show you. Ethereum is still below that 1900 that I that I like to see it at, but it's not that far off. You know, other coins, eh, they kind of took a hit. XRP hasn't recovered back up to the 50, 50 cent mark yet, but I think it will. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot, a lot of rah-rah going on about that case. We'll see what happens. I'm not expecting any kind of, you know, secret meetings or any kind of judgment calls until later this year, if that. But when it happens, I think it's going to be big. Doge, I don't know if anybody's noticing, it was up at $0.09 cents just a few days ago. Now it's back down to 7.8, which seems to be its comfortable spot. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. In case you didn't know, Doge really is useful, um, and it actually is used around the world. It's just not really big used here in the United States, but it is used around the world. Um, so we'll see about that. Now, that chart that I was telling you about, you see that? <clears throat> You have that 2828 mark that I keep telling you about. That's kind of a floor. And it's it's a pretty good support support level for Bitcoin at the moment. And then it's up a little bit. I'll be happy when it gets out of this green band area that I have right here. All right. If you if you look at if you look at my hashtags, you can see that I'm looking at 31580 as a high and I'm looking at 26539 as a low. And that creates my band. Right? And we've been kind of swimming within that band for a while. That's not a bad thing to me. I think that's a good thing. I think sooner or later we'll, we'll pop up. Um, we're back up about a billion dollars in total value locked, which is also a good thing. The fear and greed index is at 64. Remember, it was back down in the 50s yesterday and we're back up above 64 right now. And I think that's outstanding. All right. Don't forget the FOMC meeting is happening later today. That's going to be a very big deal. Again, I'm expecting a 25 basis point move. Um, I wish it wasn't, but I think we're going to see that 25 basis point move, and I think you'll see a pop in the market. But I also think it's kind of factored in already, so we'll see how that goes. So if you're if you're into the stock thing for the, for crypto, I think you're going to see a nice little pop off of that. Anyway, this is Eddie J on crypto. I hope you have a great day. I hope my research helps you. Um, let's keep going on the journey. Have a good one. Bye bye.